one week fantasy football on DraftKings, he can be the difference. So trust your gut. Trust your numbers. Trust your Uncle Vito if you want. But know this, that sleeper is out there. The question is, who's gonna play him? This is DraftKings. Welcome to the big time. To create your account, click on the banner link on the DougStewartShow.com or the Doug Stewart Show app. Football Sports App. Dot com. What is it? It's the first live action mobile sports app played in real time and a cool way to emerge yourself in the game. Make coaching calls just like the pros. Check out the video. Download for free this fall and register now again at footballsportsapp.com. Want to be part of this new exciting technology and make money? Fill out the short form at the bottom of the website and mention TDSS. Again, footballsportsapp.com. Yes, sir. Tribute Tuesday, we're paying tribute to Usher Raymond here on the show today. Another little, quick little Usher story, man. Um, I talked about how, you know, uh, you know, I mean, just violent the man's basketball game was. <laughs> but also, man, he had this, uh, oh boy, had this, what do he have, like a, um, like an art camp over the summer. Uh, which he was charging like a couple of thousand dollars per kid. Like, I, that didn't make sense to me at all. Um, you know, who, how many people uh, have have money to send their kid to camp uh, for that amount of money it costs to go to his camp? But anyway, the camp was for like like artsy kids, you know, performing arts type kids, kids that sing, dance, act, and all of that stuff. And uh, my oldest daughter, Brianna, man, he gave her free admission to this camp. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Asha. Oh, my gosh. She had a ball. She had a ball. I mean, she took so many pictures. He was actually very, um, you know, much you know, into what was going on during this camp. It was a week long. They stayed at the dorms at Spelman College or Clark or one of them schools down there once again. Uh, for people that don't know, when I say the AU and I say one of them schools down there, Clark – Morehouse, Morris Brown, Spellman are all like, they're not even a mile from each other. They like all together. Like they're all mixed into one. Like you can literally walk across the street from, say, Clark, Atlanta, and then you're on Morehouse's campus. And they call it the AU Center. And so they're all together down there. But she, they stayed in the dorms down there. And my daughter took a bunch of pictures. Uh, she talked about it for weeks and weeks and weeks, man, how they had this talent show at the end of the week and her group, uh, you know, dance, they did this dance routine or whatever. And once again, Usher was very involved with it all week long. And I don't know if he still has it or he still does it. Um, but he's definitely one of a town's finest, man. He'll hack the shit out of you, but he's one of a town's finest. <laughs> uh, yeah. Don't play him in basketball. Yeah, do not play him in basketball. Um, also, last night in the uh, NFL Monday night game where Tampa Bay beat the Carolina Panthers, Greg Olson had a career-high 181 yards, receiving on nine catches. Uh, and Cameron Artis Payne, who, oh, my gosh, I can't believe. I was so close to putting that Cameron Artis Payne kid in my lineup on DraftKings. Um and I didn't do it. Like, I literally had him in, and I think I changed him last minute. I just had a feeling that he was going to get an opportunity at some scores. Anyway, he had a big night. Um, how about this, man? Greg Olson uh, moved past Hall of Fame player Kevin or Kellen Winslow uh, for eighth all-time in yards receiving among NFL tight ends. And once again, this is one of those situations where 
you know, stats lie. I mean, <laughs> Olsen's a nice tight end. Greg Olsen's a nice tight end. Been solid as hell for a long time. But he ain't no Kellen Winslow. I mean, it's not even close. But congratulations to him moving past Kellen Winslow. Um, the Bucks also ran 20 plays to Carolina's three in the first quarter. Anderson didn't attempt to pass in the opening quarter as the Bucks controlled the ball for more than 13 minutes. And speaking of which, Carolina, man, I mean, what are the Panthers going to do right now? Panthers now. One of, one of those uh, Carolinas is one and four right now. And I picked them to go to the Super Bowl. I actually picked them to win the Super Bowl. Now, that's only five games. We'd have a 16-game schedule, right? So they got 11 more games. I mean, they could literally, theoretically, they could end the season at, I don't know, 12 and 4. It could happen, right? (laughs) I mean, it could happen. Um, And I don't know what's wrong with them, man. They just defensively, they're not doing the same things. I had a real long talk. You're listening to the Doug Stewart Show. We brought to you by footballsportsapp.com. I had a real long conversation with one of the brothers this weekend at my daughter's little league football game, and he started going into detail about, you know, he played defensive back in, in college, and he started going into detail about the effect of not having Josh Norman out there, you know, and how, you know, people really aren't looking at it and giving, he gave me all these reasons on why a shutdown corner is such a huge thing for a defense. And, yeah, I get it. I understood that. But I thought, you know, when I'm thinking about Carolina, I didn't think that they would suffer. Apparently, it's because of not having Josh Norman. Maybe that's it's more to the story than we know. But when I think of a shutdown corner having an effect on a game defensively to that level, I think of Deion Sanders. Or I think of Darrell Revis. Or I think of Rod Woodson or somebody like that. I don't think of no Josh Norman. But guess what? Something's going on. Like, they can't really stop anybody. And then the fact that they don't have Jonathan Stewart, who's always hurt, and obviously last night they didn't have Cam Newton, but it's just something missing. Now, they got plenty of time to fix it, and and I hope they do fix it because the Carolina Panthers are, you know, one of my favorite teams. They, 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 they represent my home state of South Carolina. Shut up, they do. Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. And obviously, Cam Newton being from Atlanta, Georgia, I root for him as well. But, man, it's looking real bad last night. At home, you lose to Tampa Bay, who's been struggling over the last couple of weeks. I don't know. What are y'all thoughts, man? What the hell is going on with the Carolina Panthers? 404-382-0338. You can also email me at Doug, the Doug Stewart Show, dot com From Quinn C., he says the pass rush is not getting it done this year. That's another thing that, I, that you can obviously see. They're not getting to the quarterback. And when you get to the quarterback, man, so many things go good uh, for you as a defense. Um, errant throws, you know, fumbles, strip sacks, uh, scooping scores. I mean, so many things happen good if you get to the quarterback, i.e. the Denver Broncos and Von Miller. You know, when you can get to the quarterback, it just really just stifles what an offense can do. And then you got the quarterback, you know, on skates and on his heels, um, looking for the rush, worried about getting a blindside hit, but the Carolina Panthers just don't have that this year. From Melvin, not sure, Slugger, when did that happen about Usher? Maybe you're talking about the ex took a million worth of jewelry. Uh, I'm talking about Usher. That ninja, I told you about Norman. The media puts out a BS narrative when it comes to ninjas. <laughs> uh, from Brian Hill, that way, day one and four, please don't say nothing about my Falcons, Doug. Well, I, I talked about the Falcons all day yesterday. What? Oh, oh, okay, I see now. You're listening to the Doug Stewart Show. Um, if you're new to the show, there's this, like my man Ninja just said, there's this false narrative that's going around, you know, the show and the chat room that if I pick you, you are guaranteed to lose. <laughs> How silly. How silly. Uh, that's, that's not the case at all. Now, I struggled a little bit last year with a couple of errant picks, but uh, I'm doing great this year as far as my picks, my prognostications. I mean, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. From Loose Neck Side, I was in the band in 92 when my school, Southern, came to ATL to play SCSU in the Atlanta Football Classic and went to my first reggae party at the AUC, off the chain. Oh, my gosh. The AUC is off the chain. I think uh, 
Speaking of which, I think Morris Brown's homecoming is this weekend. If I'm not mistaken, I think I saw something about that on uh, Facebook. So, for people that don't know, Morris Brown, one of the HBCUs, part of the AU, um, uh, the AU Center, they call it, um, is is basically been teetering on shutting down for, I'm going to guess, 15 years. Like, they filed bankruptcy or they or were about to file bankruptcy or something like that. But you literally could go on the campus of Morris Brown and they have class. They lost their accreditation and everything like that. Uh, but they actually have teachers there and they have classes. You can walk in the halls and see a teacher or hear a teacher teaching. You look in the window and there's a teacher and like two kids. I am not lying. It's one of the strangest things ever. Uh, me and Ryan actually were doing our show. We did a live remote on the campus of Morris Brown. I, I think it was like they were having some type of Greek picnic or something that weekend. And I guess they paid the station for us to come down there and do the show and broadcast and promote it or whatever. And so we went down there and they had us set up outside on like the lawn in front of one of the buildings. And when the show was over, um, you know, an alumni like took us like through a little tour. We went down the halls. And, you know, I went to South Carolina State. I love my HBCU. And we walked down the hall, and we stopped. We hear a teacher, you know, teaching, talking or whatever. And I look in the window, and literally there's a teacher and, like, two kids. I'm like, what the hell? And um, there's a lot of politics surround, surrounded with that story where they don't want to sell it. Um, you know, public funding, private dollars, and... Um, it's just a lot that I really don't understand, but it's a very, very strange, strange, uh, thing down there, Morris Brown. I, I love their fight. I mean, they've been fighting. They've been fighting for that school not to officially close down. There's been a lot of HBCUs over the last decade or so that have closed down that were just here and gone the next day. And, uh, so Morris Brown's still fighting, man. Ball award. Please, Lord, bless Morris Brown College. From Sluggo, Sluggo says, Grego, didn't I should have like a million dollars in jewelry stolen in Lenox Mall? Okay, this is what they were talking about a little bit earlier. Um, don't leave that ish in Lambo, in a Lambo. Huh, I, I hadn't heard that story. From Sam Daddy, will be in ATL for CAU homecoming this weekend. Okay, so Clark has their homecoming this weekend. Clark Atlanta is another HBCU down there in that area. I don't think I mentioned them earlier when I rolled out all the different names of uh, the schools. From Sluggo. Uh, Usher visits GSU campus a lot too. That ninja knows where to go and re <laughs> and to re up. What are you saying? He go down there and he likes some young. Is that what you're saying? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. When I first moved to Atlanta, man, and you're li- <laughs> and you're listening to the Doug Stewart show. <sighs> when I first moved to Atlanta, it was '95, right? So that was. At the height, or that was at the very end of Freaknik. And so a lot of the activities went down at, like, uh, Washington Park, uh, Piedmont Park. And, you know, obviously with the huge contingency, there's more HBCU students, I believe the fact is, in Atlanta than any other place in the country. Or there's more HBCUs in one city in Atlanta, that being Atlanta, than any other place in the country. I mean, once again, it's like five HBCUs within a stone's throw of each other. And when I tell you, man, some of the, and back then it was okay for me to say this. I'm, I'm, all right, I'm 47 years old now, but back then I was 22, okay? I was 22, 23 years old. And so if you're a senior in college, if you're a young lady and you're a senior in college, you're 21 years old, something like that. So it's okay for me to say this. When I tell you some of the finest women in the history of the world were on that AU campus, Claude, have mercy. Yes, sir. Ooh. I mean, ATL, though, pound for pound, and you would you would think that a lot of the women that graduate from the AU from different you know the different HBCUs down there they stay in Atlanta, okay? When I tell you pound for pound, man, Atlanta got some of the finest women walking this earth. You know I'll put Atlanta up against any place else, DC, LA, wherever, Miami, 